Hi there survivors, Kato Genesis here, and I've finally compiled a comprehensive list of the true unique weapons in the vanilla game of Fallout 4. While saying true uniques is pretty subjective on my part, the criteria for this guide is that there must be only one instance of the given unique weapon, or an explicit limited number. So the legendaries you can buy from merchants and get from quest rewards like Kellogg's Pistol, Pikmin's Blade, and yes, even the Wazer Wifle will not be on this list. Their stats are no different from legendary weapons that do the same thing. Now, weapons and some mods that will be included are things like the Cryolator and the Junk Jet, the Deliverer, Lorenzo's Artifact. On top of these being in a limited number of locations, they're also quite special in appearance and include effects that you won't find on anything else. I hope the intention of this guide is now clear. The locations of each of these weapons, their base statistics, alongside their maximum potential from workbench upgrades, and the perk requirements to do that will be shown. With that, it's time to see what one-of-a-kind weapons we can walk away with in the Commonwealth. First, and most likely something you've already seen, is the Cryolator. This cold spewing big gun is found in Vault 111. Now normally this isn't accessible as you are leaving the vault for the first time, since it is locked in a glass box in the lead scientist's office, requiring master level lock picking to open it, or a certain exploitative dog. After retrieving it, you may notice that the Cryolator is a great crowd control weapon. Its name spells out that it does have a freezing effect that can slow most enemies and even freeze them solid sometimes, starting at a base of 20 energy damage. Being this is an unusual weapon, it also uses the somewhat uncommon cryo ammunition, but the wasteland merchants in the larger towns and cities will be happy to set you up with ammo as long as you have the caps to spend. The cryolator truly shows its value when being upgraded, with a doubled maximum damage potential if the crystallizing barrel is used, turning the spray attack into ice pellets instead, adding 20 ballistic damage, and making it more ammo efficient in the process. For some extra icing on this gun, there are also no perk requirements when it comes to upgrading at the workbench, so once you have the material necessary, you can upgrade at your leisure. Even if you do not use big guns, the potential for chill-out one-liners against your foes makes the cryolator worth it on its own. Now, the second one may surprise you, but I could not find another way to acquire one, and that is the flare gun that Preston Garby gives you after finishing one of the first Minuteman quests when Freedom Calls. After completing it, Preston gives you this flare gun along with a promotion, and a few flares to use as well. This is not at all a combat weapon, nor can it be upgraded. If you require more flares once the castle armory is opened up, the wooden box in there is regularly restocked with flares for both the flare gun and for artillery. But if you run into one of the many hostile locations in the Commonwealth and fire one of these flares towards the nearest settlement, you can call for assistance from the nearby militia. If successfully seen, another flare will be fired in response. And shortly after that, three to six Minutemen will arrive to assist. Even though they seem to come up short when it comes to combat effectiveness, having some Minutemen randomly show up makes a great distraction. If you so choose to make them fodder, they don't have to know that. For that explicit limited number I mentioned, there are two possible places to get the junk jet, but only one is guaranteed. You can get one in an encounter with the Manta Man, as for the permanent location it is found in Arcjet Systems. Now under normal circumstances this is accessible during the Brotherhood of Steel quest Call to Arms, which can be started at the Cambridge Police Station. Follow this quest until you find a rocket testing area. You will find the junk jet on a small table next to a holotape. The junk jet comes pre-constructed and moddable. Like the Cryolator, the junk jet is another big gun and has a flat base damage of 40 when found. While firing the gun from first person, you can charge it like a Gauss rifle, increasing velocity and likely damage of the junk fired. However, it is yet to be determined how much damage this actually does. As for VATS, let's just assume it does full damage. Ammunition has never been more plentiful for any other weapon, and pressing the reload button will allow you to load just about any junk item into this weapon to fire. For the best results when modding your junk jet, rank 3 of Gun Nut and rank 1 of Science are recommended and modding it to its full potential, with the ignition module included, this will set the projectiles and the target if hit on fire for 16 extra energy damage. Some settlers you choose to save might be confused when you tell them you took out those green skins with flaming typewriters and burning tin cans. But if it's effective, who would question it? For the fourth unique weapon on this list, it is more of a unique mod, and that is Krem's Tooth. This is found deep in the bowels of Dunwich Borers. In the final chamber within the mines, and submerged in a watery pit, is an altar with two mini nukes on either side, and Krem's Tooth in the center. To prevent drowning, you can eat a Mirelert cake before diving in, but whatever you do, do not go down here in power armor. This gnarly looking blade has a base damage of 28, deals poison damage, and causes targets to bleed. As mentioned before, in actuality, this is 
unique machete blade called the Sacrificial Blade. This is one of the few uniques you can get multiple effects out of by attaching it to a legendary machete handle. For example, I found a quick draw machete and put the Sacrificial Blade on it, giving it the exceptional damage boost as well as the damage over time, and because of the legendary effect, reduced AP cost. There really isn't an excuse not to get this blade, especially when you find a legendary machete to combine this with. If you are a melee user of any capacity, get this weapon. Now from one of the most deadly ballistic weapons in the game, fifth is the Deliverer. This heavily modified 10mm pistol is found underneath of Slocum's Joe in Lexington during the introductory quest for the railroad called Tradecraft. Get into Switchboard and find your way to the objective, and the Deliverer will be part of your rewards. If you decide to get the Deliverer early, it may be the first weapon you gain with a suppressor, because it comes with one by default. It also starts with a base damage of 25. If its appearance wasn't enough to make it unique, it has a legendary effect for good measure, improving the chance to hit in vats and reducing the action point cost by 25%. So before it is even upgraded, regardless of your available action points, you will get a lot of attacks in vats with the Deliverer. It also has six interchangeable parts. To maximize the upgrades, you will need Gun Nut Rank 3, or if you'd rather be patient with Tinker Tom, he will periodically sell mods for the Deliverer. Its max possible base damage output can be 43 if you fully upgrade it, and if you wish to extend its range dramatically, simply remove the suppressor. If you are running a stealthy type character with a suppressed deliverer, you will potentially be able to score not just one, but multiple sneak attacks on each enemy. In the right hands, delivering death has never been so easy, quick, and quiet. Next for us to check out is called Lorenzo's Artifact. Like Krem's Tooth, this one is also a unique weapon mod that is a replacement to the standard dish on a Gamma Gun. The Zeta Gun was also going to be included alongside Lorenzo's Artifact, but that one is more of a quest item and more than one can be acquired. But regardless, both of these are found in the Secret of Cabot House questline, which can be started once you meet Edward Deegan over at the Bunker Hill Memorial. The quest leads you to multiple locations, including the Cabot House, and most importantly, the Parsons State Insane Asylum. Complete this quest by siding with Jack, and after about a week, you will be notified to go see him again to receive Lorenzo's artifact gun. This gun has a significant knockback effect. It will deal 25 explosive damage and 10 radiation damage. Instead of increasing the base damage, with the muzzle mods available, you can increase the damage per second this gun puts out. But if you do wish to increase its base damage, you will need to find a legendary gamma gun with a damage increase effect and attach Lorenzo's artifact to it but this would be a good idea with just about any legendary Gamma Gun. If you have the Gamma Rounds to spare, this is excellent crowd control. On a final note, there are plenty of ragdoll effects to behold with Lorenzo's Artifact. Next is the signature weapon of a certain comic book barbarian, Grognax Axe. You can find it in Hubris Comics, which is southwest of Good Neighbor and Boston Common. Right after stepping inside the comic shop, behind the front counter is a glass case with the axe inside. This case has an advanced lock, but if you are unable to pick it, bring a certain Irish bird and she will gladly assist. And if you wish to take on the barbarian role further, Grognak's costume is on the top floor in a locker. This surprisingly sharp replica has a base damage of 25, includes bonus effects of causing more stagger per hit, and causes your target to bleed. In spite of this being a large two-handed weapon, its swing speed is medium rather than slow, and it has a significantly low action point cost for VATS usage, according to the wiki as low as a combat knife. Better melee weapons can be found later, but Grognak's axe is great to use early on, especially when it comes to efficiency. Simply being able to personify a barbarian in the Boston Wastes should be enough incentive at the very least to try the axe out. Another comic book character prop is this silver submachine gun. I hesitated including this because it's really no different from a standard submachine gun except for its looks. But at any rate, the prop itself is found in Hubris Comics mentioned previously behind the film set on the top floor lying atop some wooden crates. And if it is brought to Kent Connolly in Good Neighbor when you bring the Silver Shroud costume as well to the memory den, you will receive a working version of the silver submachine gun. As expected, the silver submachine gun is silver, and the grip and stock are actually darker than the standard variant. Everything else about it is identical stats-wise. And also, if you get the Silver Shroud costume from Kent Connolly before turning in the Silver Submachine Gun prop, you can buy the actual Silver Submachine Gun from Cleo, the Assaultron weapons vendor in Good Neighbor. Having this one is strictly for collective purposes, or just to match your Silver Shroud costume. And statistically, the Grognak costume will give you the better deal. But it's your choice as to what makes you feel like more of a superhero. 
As for one that is not in the silver and or gray area, number nine is the Broadsider. Described as a portable naval cannon, its primary ammunition, cannonballs. You can gain this from Captain Ironsides of the USS Constitution during the quest The Last Voyage of the USS Constitution. It is just southeast of Bunker Hill. You must remain on the side of the ship's crew for the quest's duration, otherwise you will forfeit the chance of getting the Broadsider. While its ammunition is tough to obtain in large amounts, the sheer damage output of the Broadsider, the base damage being 108, puts it on par with fully upgraded Gauss rifles and missile launchers, so it will have use for the game's entirety as long as you have the cannonballs to fire from it. To give it its upgrades for a better rate of fire, as well as increased ammo capacity, you will only need the first rank of gun nut. Not much else needs to be said about this weapon, it's a portable cannon, and will be as explosively effective as you can expect, to big and small enemies alike. Tenth on this list is the Alien Blaster Pistol. This appears for the player after you hear and possibly see an unidentified aircraft flying dangerously low to the ground, until you hear it crash. The UFO crash site ends up being north of Vault 81, and is pretty easy to spot due to some of the area being on fire. Leading away from the UFO is a trail of green goo that ends at a small cave entrance, and inside this small cave you will find the pilot. Once putting it out of its misery, you will find the Alien Blaster pistol on its corpse, along with a generous amount of Alien Blaster rounds. The Alien Blaster starts off with a base damage of 50, and a rather quick fire rate, as well as a large pool of ammunition before having to reload. And since it is the most technologically advanced weapon on this list, Gaining full access to the modifications of the Alien Blaster Pistol will require a rank 4 in science. Choosing to fully upgrade the Alien Blaster Pistol will nearly double its range, give it a little bit more accuracy, and for an ever so slight damage reduction, you can convert it to using fusion cells once you run out of the alien cells. So this gun will not become useless when you run out of the alien ammo. And as per the usual for Martian guns, if you so choose to vaporize your foes with this one, the effects and ashes will be a cool blue color. Set your companion up with a laser or plasma weapon, and you will have the recipe for a deadly light show. 11th and last of the official True Uniques list is the 2076 World Series Baseball Bat, which is found underneath the Town Hall of Jamaica Plains. Now, a lot of treasure hunters met their demise coming to Jamaica Plains simply to get into this room where the bat is located. You will find their bodies around town, and keys and passwords on some of their corpses to get into the Town Hall basement. Find your way through the elaborate security grid and into the room where this treasure is supposed to be located. Once inside, just to your right, the 2076 World Series Baseball Bat is sitting in the display case. This looks like any other run-of-the-mill baseball bat, except for the World Series stamp on it. And another thing that makes it special is it has a small chance to send targets flying. And also like other baseball bats, its swing speed remains slow, and its base damage is 16. But with rank 2 of the blacksmith perk, you can add the bladed upgrade and switch the material over to aluminum, which will nearly double its damage. Just having that small chance of knocking foes off their feet raises the chance of a phenomenal outcome in any combat situation. Aim for the fences to break that distance record. Since it is difficult to put together a list like this, there are quite a few rare items that didn't quite fit the criteria, but that I feel still deserve mention. The honorable mentions list will be in the description as well as their locations, so if you also wish to get those, you're more than welcome. So that's it for the True Unique Weapons Guide for the vanilla game of Fallout 4. If you feel like something was missed, remember the criteria was stated at the beginning of the guide. There must be only one of its kind, or an explicit limited number. So weapons left to random chance are not on this list. But if any of you lovely wastrels still think something is missing and wish to contribute to the guide, the most important thing you can tell us is where to find it. Because it's a vast wasteland, why not help each other out? Thanks for allowing me to torture myself in making this. Do you have a favorite unique or legendary or any kind of weapon in Fallout 4? Put it up in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. And if you enjoyed this video and want more, you certainly know what to do. Thank you so very much for watching, this is Kato Genesis, and may you wander the commonwealth like you own it. <laughs>